I have a hard time getting that straight, but their young people and my young people, they still my young people, uh, get go forward and, and try to have a great football team next fall. Clemson football coach Danny Ford is out. This is News 4 Thursday. Hello again, everyone. I'm Carl Clark. And I'm Annette Estes. Clemson University football coach Danny Ford resigned today. That, of course, is the big news of the day. Stan Olenek has been on the campus of Clemson and is here now to tell us uh, what you know. A little bit, and of course at noon we had a good chance to pretty much fill people in, but if you were at work and missed some of it, the university issued a statement very early today, well, actually not early, actually rumors and then confirmation of that rumor actually got out before the statement issued by the university that Ford and the school had decided to part based on philosophical differences, and the two were parting company, and Ford told me this afternoon he has no problem with that description of their departure. It was honest differences of opinion, I think is the way it was worded. I haven't even read it since late last night, so I can't even remember exactly what it said. It hadn't slept all night either, so uh, um, uh, I, I can't say exactly, but I think the words were used, uh, uh, honest uh, differences of opinion on how things should be done, and, and uh, you know, I think both parties would buy that, and, and uh, uh, like I say, I, I think both uh, agreed to an agreement is what was signed. And, Details of the resignation and settlement were worked out between Ford and the university late last evening. And then today, Danny Ford met with his coaches, and then later at the Schletter Dining Hall, his players. And that turned out to be two of the tougher things that he's had to do in all of his years of coaching a football team at Clemson University. Tough this morning facing our, our, our staff meeting at 8 o'clock and, and telling them that I, that, that I was resigning, and it's tough facing our, our uh, players but life to us too so that's that's part of it but but i, I know their children and i know all that and all that and, and i know what uh, you know as we'd have wednesday night meetings uh suppers with our with their children and families that there's a bunch of them that's done a good job at clemson and and uh, and i'm sure that the university is gonna gonna uh, interview some and and, and uh, give them a chance to prove what they can do now Ford spent the bulk of the day on his farm near Clemson and one thing that he wanted to make clear as did the press release at Clemson want to make perfectly clear is the fact that there is no link between Ford's resignation and the NCAA probe at the school. That the, by no shape or form was that why I resigned and, and I want that, that's got to be very clear. That's got to be very clear for my, my attorney that's got to be very clear to me and uh, I think that'll be proven in, in, in May. Now with the story spreading and release of information lagging somewhat behind, Athletic Director Bobby Robinson was also in the meeting with Clemson players. There are some reports that say some of the players walked out when Robinson addressed the group, but beyond that, Robinson, after meeting with that bunch, really had little to say at first. This is uh, something that was agreed on by both, all the parties involved, and we're really not gonna go any further than the statement. Does something precipitate this beyond what's I'm going on? I'm not going to go into any more than that. When will that be made available? There's nothing going to be made available. It's, it's, there's nothing more to add. To. You're not responsible to let people know any more than that? So at the time, it appeared Robinson would have nothing further to say, but a short time later, media was allowed to visit with him in his office, and he filled in some of the details on how Ford and the university parted company. We went into a meeting and discussed uh, different things, and uh, that's the way it evolved. But, I mean, there was no one who offered first? There were, but that was a private conversation, and I'm not going to go into what was Still discussed the in the private. The conversation that, that we had was a private conversation, and I'm not going to go into that conversation. And so Robinson wouldn't go any further on how the money would be used, but he did say that Ford's buyout would not involve any IPTE money. Now, while Danny Ford may no longer be the head football coach at Clemson, there are quite a few benefits remaining to him because of his years at Clemson. Under the terms of the settlement, Ford will continue to receive his annual salary of $190,000 for the next five years unless he accepts another coaching position before then. Ford will also maintain his current residence until May 31st of 1990. The university will also pay the $100,000 balance on the mortgage on the Ford's farm. He'll also receive the title to a Chevy van, and he and his family will continue to receive health insurance for the remainder of the year. Some people estimate that the total buyout value, if Ford does not get another coaching job, could approach well over $1 million in the course of the next five years. 
And there is also a key to remember here that the contract, in terms of if it was related to an NCAA violation, could have been ended much more cheaply or a great deal less expensively by the school. And almost by the mere fact that the three-year buyout or five-year program is being included by the university would almost clearly give a signal that Ford is not involved in any wrongdoing as far as the NCAA upcoming report is to be mentioned. Now, the terms of the agreement state that none of the parties are to discuss any of the particulars. So in many ways, some of the rumors about Ford's departure really are still left unanswered. The often heard story of major disagreements between the head football coach and the university's administration at this point will become a substantial issue in the resignation puzzle. Now, Stephen Stock has been on the story all day, and he looks in to what the Ford resignation appears to be from the official school standpoint. The administration reaction was quick and to the point. Well, it's a sad day. Uh, Clemson University is a class institution. Uh, we have a great deal of respect for Danny Ford, for his family, for the assistant coaches, their families, a large number of student athletes, the accomplishments during the 80s, uh, what can we say? Rumors have circulated on the Clemson campus for months of a power struggle between the university administration and some athletic forces, especially Ford. President Max Lennon has made no secret of his intention to continue to stress academics at Clemson. Sometimes that has not gone over so well with some people in an environment known for its almost fanatical sports following. I'm disappointed that anyone would think that uh, Danny Ford and Max Lennon can't sit down and talk. Coach Ford is a highly professional person. Both of us committed to the same objective. Then forgive me for asking, but why now? Why did this happen? If, if you all are getting along great and everything's great, why did he decide to leave? A fair question. But again, I can simply point out that we've made our statement. Uh, we've agreed that there's not much that we can say. Administration officials also say that Ford's resignation has nothing to do with the current NCAA investigation into the Tiger football program. Nothing in that current investigation alleges any problem with academics among Clemson's athletes. I hope that uh, the general public under understands our priorities and that we're an academic institution in this matter uh, would not relate to that at all. Still, there is no question that President Max Lennon has emerged more solidified in his position, at least for now. Has this weakened your job any? Do you feel more insecure about your job? I feel like that uh, the support that we need is enthusiastic. Whether Ford's resignation solidifies the Clemson community or further divides it still remains to be seen. Stephen Stock, News 4, Greenville. Now, as far as the era with Ford goes, it appears that obviously it is over, but there are other questions as to what will happen with the present coaching staff, uh, who could be the next head football coach, and some thoughts that Danny Ford has on his years at Clemson, and we'll try and answer some of those questions a little bit later on. Can I ask you uh, one question, and you probably can't answer it, but why do you think the officials have given him such a good deal here? They didn't have to, to make a deal like that. I, I think that gives rise to virtually everyone's opinion as to what they want to read into it. I think the one thing that we wanted to make clear was the fact that because of the length of the settlement, it would seem to indicate that there would be no NCAA problems. Mm -hmm. um, you give people a lot of money to make them do what you want, and that might be the real key here. All okay. right, Sam, thanks. On and off campus, people are calling this a bad day at Clemson, and that sentiment is not just confined to the students. Michael Cogdell joins us now live from the campus of Clemson University. And Michael, are the people you've talked with there upset about this news? Annette, I believe upset may be an understatement right now. We have been all over Clemson University and in the surrounding area throughout the day. Folks we talked to were downright angry, many of them, when they heard that Danny Ford had chosen to resign today. A lot of folks here want Ford to stay on as coach. And not everybody has agreed with every decision Danny Ford has made regarding the football program over the years. But there's no doubt about it. Tonight, Danny Ford has a lot of loyal followers here at Clemson. I hate to see the man go because it's been a good, it's nice having a winning football program. I don't even think the college has given a response to, uh, to the NCAA as of yet. So I was kind of, I was kind of stunned by what happened. It's going to be sad seeing Coach Ford leave. That was the talk around campus as word of Danny Ford's resignation spread after lunch today. And in downtown Clemson, the lunch crowd was talking about the deal Ford is getting as he leaves. 
I think it's fair. I think it's a contract, and people look at it and say, well, it's a lot of money. And $193,000 or $190,000 for three years is a lot of money. However, remember, he had a contract for five years for about that same amount of money. So he's taking less money than he would get if he'd stayed here and coached. But at the hair salon across the street, not everybody agreed with that. That's overdoing it, I think. <laughs> I just can't figure why they give someone $190,000 to quit. And then is the type of person that he, he told people what he thought. He didn't turn around. And but the money that aside, that folks here at Max Drive-In near Clemson are furious. Danny Ford sometimes aged here, and one of the cooks here, Esther Scott, believes he was forced to resign. You really want to know the truth? I want to know the truth. I think the railroad. I really do. A winning coach. Why do they want to get rid of winner, winner coach? And in that same vein, football aside, a lot of folks here at Clemson are sad to see Danny Ford go because they tell me they simply like the man. They think he's a nice, ordinary guy. So as Carl, as you said there a moment ago, in the minds of many people here at Clemson and the surrounding area, this is a bad day for Clemson University. Okay, thank you very much, Michael Cargill, live at the university tonight. The teams coached by Danny Ford have certainly given Tiger fans reason to roar over the years. and. The news of his sudden resignation, I guess, hits like a tackle by William the Fridge Perry. Carlisle has spent today's sampling fan reaction. Reports now from downtown Greenville. Football is not everything, but football is important. 37 years ago, Tom Black Cat Barton was an All-American nose guard for the Clemson Tigers. Today, he calls the signals as president of Greenville Tech. He says this is a sad day for the program, but as they say, life goes on. It's a whole new day, and, and what, what I see is uh, uh, finding a new leader uh, to take that responsibility and, and to move on with the future. I was shocked. I was stunned. In other words, I just froze when I heard it. And we heard a lot of that today. I was a shocker. And I was really surprised. I was shocked. Danny Ford's kind of like a tradition around here, always been here, seems like the last 10 or 10 years or so. And this is unbelievable. I can't hardly believe it's happened. He's a good feller, and uh, he didn't want to be, you know, caught up in any, anything that he thought might not be right. But the fan on the street also has faith Clemson football will remain a powerhouse. It will go on just the same. So it's the end of an era, but it's not the end of the world. Right. That's Carlyle reporting. So uh, how do you feel about Danny Ford's resignation? You could call our Four Facts hotline and take part in the poll. If you call tonight, we will ask you one simple question, and that is, do you think Danny Ford's resignation is in the best interest of Clemson University? To take part, dial our Fourfax number at 242-4444, and then enter Ford, F-O-R-D, or 3673. Just follow the recorded instructions. And we'll have the results of the poll on News 4 tonight at 11 o'clock. Analytics back with more on the sports fan. No matter what, uh, Danny Ford certainly made a contribution to football in this area, didn't he? Well, and I think he left, obviously, has left a mark on, uh, yeah. on exactly what goes on at Clemson. Uh, Clemson had been known for some time as having some success as far as football goes, but those days had kind of waned a little bit after Frank Howard had left. And Danny Ford, of course, was in the forefront of bringing it back. Uh, and making it into what it is today, which is one of the top football programs in the entire country. Uh, there were some bumps in the road, but there were a lot of highlights. And Sherry Greenberg has prepared this look back at Ford's career at Clemson. Danny Ford certainly had one of the most auspicious beginnings of a head football coach. In 1978, he was only in his second season as an assistant coach at Clemson when he took over the team in the Gator Bowl and led the Tigers to victory. It was the beginning of a winning tradition for Ford. In 11 full years of coaching the Tigers, his teams never had a losing record. After only his third full season at the helm, Ford led his team to the pinnacle of college football. The Tigers capped off an undefeated season by beating Nebraska in the Orange Bowl for the national championship of 1981. Success on the field, however, led to problems off the field. In 1982, the NCAA cited Clemson for violations and put the school on probation for two years. The Atlantic Coast Conference tacked on another year's probation, so Clemson couldn't be on television or participate in a bowl game until the 1985 season. Since then, the Tigers have been to five consecutive bowl games, and they've won the last four they've been in, picking up victories over Joe Paterno's Penn State team and Oklahoma's Barry Switzer. An impressive victory over West Virginia capped off the 1989 campaign. Ford leaves Clemson as the fourth winningest active coach and percentage-wise as the winningest coach in the ACC. Sherry Greenberg, News 4 Sports. 
Now, of course, the next question is, what is the next step? We're at the height of the recruiting season. Uh, school cannot afford to be without a football coach. No matter what they talk about as far as the entire mission, the program will go on next year, and they need to fill that spot. Now, Athletic Director Bobby Robinson addressed that issue slightly today. We did that. Uh, we, we will begin immediately uh, a search for a coach. Uh, I'll tell you the same thing we told the team. We want to get someone as quickly as possible for a lot of reasons, and we want to get the best person, whether that's internally or externally. And we do have a, uh, like anyone, you, uh, you keep a list of people that you're interested in for any position. Uh, that's the way we've done it. And we'll start evaluating that uh, really this afternoon. Now, of course, the players are the ones who may or may not have something to say or could be affected by this. They filed out of the meeting. They have been asked by the school not to say anything about their meeting with Coach Ford and Robinson, but we understand that several groups of players have met and hope to be able to talk to the athletic director, and they are obviously in a position to try and campaign for someone. Let's give you a few ideas as to what's going on now. It appears that Bobby Robinson will be the guy who will make the decision, and then that recommendation will be accepted by the school. And one of the very well-qualified members on the staff could include Chuck Reedy, the longtime running back coach, or Bill Oliver, who has head coaching experience. There are some other names being bandied about right now. Most of it would seem to be purely speculation at this point and not much sense in putting them forward, and so there really isn't. But we do know that there are some people on the existing staff who would be well-qualified if Clemson chooses to look within. Now, coming up in a little bit, we'll come back and talk a little bit more with Danny Ford about the decision and about what is next for Coach Ford as we take a look with him at his future. And there is obviously other things going on in the world of sports, and there's a big basketball game tonight between Wofford and Furman, and we'll preview that contest for you coming up when we come back for more sports. That was quite a story. People called from all over the country for information, didn't they? Mm -hmm. All right. Again, today's Sam. top local story, Clemson University football coach Danny Ford has resigned. Ford denies any wrongdoing, even though the NCAA recently cited the football program for 14 rules violations. Under terms of his resignation, Ford will receive $190,000 a year for three years. Perhaps the deal could reach five years, depending on whether he takes another coaching job. No replacement has been named to lead the Clemson University football program. Obviously, it's old news now. The resignation of Danny Ford has been going on all day, and you've heard a great many stories about it. And certainly, when someone holds a position like Danny Ford has over the years, there are those that can be detractors as well as those that become fans. Ford, in many ways, clearly established a style for Clemson football during his years as the head coach, and it seems somewhat appropriate that today Danny Ford was spending time on his farm. With a substantial buyout and many top-notch coaching accomplishments, Ford, at least on the surface, seems at ease with his decision to leave. First time in 20-something years that I've never had to schedule them. Like, I, I'm going to be bored, I guess, or I'm going to have too much free time, but i got to do. I got a lot to do out here and, and uh, lots to stay busy with. And, and I'm very interested in Clemson's program and, and what they do and, and how their kids, uh, our, our kids progress on, on the football field and spring practice and their grades and, and all this. And I'm going to be, uh, if possible, overlooking from a long way back and not, not bothering anybody. But uh, I told our players that uh, they know where I live and they know where this place is here and uh, we can fish out here and we can talk and I'll help them anyway in personal problems or any, any other situation that, that may come up. And I, and I want them to be at Clemson and graduate and have a great football team. Now for Ford, he may or may not be looking for another coaching job in the future. Certainly the school will be. But at this point, it's much too early to decide as to whether or not Danny Ford's coaching days are behind him as far as he is concerned. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm a Clemson fan and uh, you know, I'm not a bad football coach. Uh, I'm gonna sit around and see what happens, and you know, I, I'm not ruling out that I'm getting back in football coaching. Uh, well, I like that, you know, and, and uh, uh, I, I, I think it came at a good time. I needed some rest and be with my family and be a daddy for a while because I've, I've really neglected that. So, but uh, <clears throat> I'm, I'm, uh, you know. I would surely be open to talking about football again with, with uh, whatever. So as we saw him last riding off the field of the Gator Bowl on the shoulders of his team, Danny Ford now is a past Clemson football coach. Of course, there still are some questions to be answered about what's going on in all of this. The NCAA probe overshadows everything. What's next as far as the successor? What do the players think who are, after all, the most important people 
in this entire equation, the young men who have decided to come to Clemson to uh, get an education and to play football. And uh, as of now, you know, the school has told us that they're off limits as far as saying anything, and we're just going to have to wait to see how they make their presence known in the next week to come. The big question tonight, who will pick up the bill to pay Danny Ford? Good evening, I'm Carl Clark. And I'm Annette Estes. University officials say the million-dollar settlement to Ford will come from the athletic department, but South Carolina taxpayers help put the athletic department's bill. So who pays? Stephen Stock investigates. As the shock over what happened here yesterday wears off, the question many people ask was, who will pay for Coach Ford's buyout plan? Clemson's football program earned more than $9 million last year, partly through the sale of tickets, bowl appearances, TV rights, and stadium skybox rentals. Athletic officials say that Ford's payoff will come from this money, not from taxpayers, not from privately raised IPTE funds, not from student athletic fees. They're separate accounts uh, on the revenue side, as well as any expenditure. Uh, we have cost centers. We also have uh, revenue centers. Uh, that identify ticket sales directly related to football or ticket sales directly related to basketball. But the chairman of South Carolina's House Committee that oversees all state expenditures says that the money can't be separated quite so easily. Well, the athletic department doesn't exist as an island unto itself. Uh, it could not exist that way. Uh, the state certainly pays for facilities and salaries and other things associated with the uh, athletic activity. Uh, and this is not a criticism of that, but it's a fact. So to say that the state funds are not involved might be shading it just a little bit. I think a situation like this that affects so many people in South Carolina at one of our major universities, at one of the men who is probably as well known as anyone in South Carolina, I think we have a duty to the people to look into it. At least one member of Clemson's Board of Trustees also wants to know exactly where the money's coming from. Buck Mickle says he expects to find out a week from today when the Board of Trustees meets here on campus. Stephen Stock, News 4, Clemson. The chairman of the board, Lewis Batson, says he's not sure where the money's coming from. He also says tonight that the board supports University President Max Lennon 100%. As a strange coincidence of timing, there was a new face at the Clemson President's office today, and it didn't have anything to do with Danny Ford. A student won a chance to be president for the morning as part of a United Way campaign to raise money. More than a dozen other students also switched roles with university officials today. The Ford resignation sent shockwaves throughout the upstate of South Carolina. Local radio stations have been flooded with calls on the coach's behalf. And as News 4's Jonathan Sari reports tonight, many fans are demanding that Clemson give Ford back his job. Look at all this good Clemson stuff. Amid all the controversy, Tiger fans are roaring louder than ever. Oh, I hate to lose Danny. I like Danny. I really don't know that much about it, but I think he's been very good for Clemson. Although Danny Ford is unemployed, he's not underpaid. His severance package could earn him more than a million dollars. I'd watch the grass grow for a million dollars. Despite all the wealth, many fans still believe he was treated unfairly. Because his life has been totally disrupted. It also disrupted the material of upstate radio personalities who parody Ford. Howard Hudson and Bill Love received so many calls from disappointed listeners, they say they will keep their character Danny Board as part of WMYI's morning show. Danny, now that, uh, that you're apparently out of college football for a while, what are you going to do with yourself? Well, yeah, after, of course, we, we, we're going to be... We're going to be tending to the, to the cows and all that, but that, that ain't everything. Uh, it's fun, but it's not everything. Today, Designs Unlimited started screen printing t-shirts calling for Ford's reinstatement. The company has been swamped with requests. Thank you. Bye. This brings you to how many orders? Approximately uh, 110. Now, the designers say they doubt whether their t-shirts will actually be able to bring back the coach, but many faithful Ford fans say they won't take off the shirts until Danny Ford returns to Clemson. Jonathan Sari, News 4, Greenville. Diehard Ford supporters say they will hold a candlelight vigil at Bowman Field tonight at 9 o'clock. Well, Danny Ford supporters called our Fourfax telephone survey in droves last night. We asked the question, do you think Danny Ford's resignation is in the best interest of Clemson University? And the overwhelming majority say no. With more than 2,700 calls, 89% say no, 11% say yes. We thank all of you for calling.
Dan Lennox here to talk a little sports. Dan, I know there are lots of questions about the Danny Ford situation. One of those is who will replace him? Well, and that continues to be a question. You know, last night the players talked about uh, the best replacement for Danny Ford could be Danny Ford, yeah. but uh, more than likely that isn't going to happen, although we have some information about that. Today, uh, there has become a large number of names that have come out, and what we're going to do is strictly do the rumor routine here. We're going to show you names of people who have been broadcast uh, in broadcast reports or in newspaper reports that have been somehow linked to Clemson. The only thing we can tell you is that the top name on the list has confirmed that Clemson has asked the Air Force Academy for permission to talk to Fisher DeBerry. Ken Hatfield of Arkansas is a name that has been reported by some people. Dick Sheridan was reported in the Columbia State. Uh, Bill Oliver and Chuck Reedy, both on the Clemson staff, will in fact have interviews tomorrow about the job, and Bobby Ross has been mentioned in a newspaper report from Atlanta. But the name on the top of the list, Fisher DeBerry, may be the one to watch very closely. Again, speculation just continues along about all people, and in fact, some of these names fall into the category of round up the usual suspects. They are names that are mentioned with a great many jobs around the country. DeBerry, of course, came very close to getting the North Carolina job last year. Now, again, there's no official game plan, supposedly, but two interviews are known amongst Clemson assistants. That's set for tomorrow sometime. Now, today was the day after all the big news at Clemson, and this was the scene in Danny Ford's office as everyone was getting ready to kind of move him out. Boxes were being loaded, personal effects were being gathered, and Ford was wrapping up 12 years in that office as the head football coach at Clemson. And obviously, there are a great many things to do as far as moving out of the office. Now, who sits in the chair next? Well, last night, Clemson players made their feelings very clearly known when they met amongst themselves and then came out and talked to media members about what they hope can be accomplished with their football team. We come to terms. We would wish to keep this coaching job among the assistant coaches. We want someone who has come through the battles with us and someone who knows how to win Clemson style. I wish that we could be considered and even thought about in the decisions that's going to be made about us in the near future. We've got a lot going for us. Coach Ford wishes the best. He wants us to win a national championship. We love Coach Ford, and we want to send him our regards, and we want him to have the best. But most of all, we want him back. We want him back now. Oh, yeah! yeah. Now, there were some meetings fed scheduled between representatives of the football team and athletic director Bobby Robinson. They were pushed back on a couple of occasions this afternoon. The latest time is, is the meeting's supposed to start at 6.30. And also, a great many people are trying to organize a candlelight vigil on Bowman Field tonight. They're hoping that everyone who supports Coach Ford and what he's done with the football program will show up there around 9 o'clock. Danny Ford is out. Ken Hatfield is in as head football coach at Clemson. Good evening to you. I'm Liz Walker. And I'm Michael Cogdell. To say the least, this has been another eventful day at Clemson University. And, of course, our sports director, Stan Hellenic, has been in the thick of it all day long. Stan, the university wasting no time in replacing Danny Ford. No, they did it pretty quickly. And, of course, last night, I think at uh, midnight, I had a chance to visit with Max Lennon. And, of course, that was too late to put it on the air last night because we were already off it. Uh, he was quizzed about the possibility of Ken Hatfield being one of the candidates. He would not be specific, but it appears that a deal was struck last night, finalized early this morning, and of course, as many of you got a chance to see live here this afternoon, and uh, you probably saw as much as we're going to show you, if not more, when we had a chance to bring you the live press conference announcing Ken Hatfield as new football coach at Clemson. Now, the word spread quickly through the ranks this morning. The first people to hear officially were the Clemson assistant coaches that Arkansas head football coach Ken Hatfield was on his way to Clemson. Now, he first met with his team in Fayetteville after accepting the job last night and then came to Clemson to begin the new challenge facing him. The first order of business for new Clemson football coach Ken Hatfield was to meet with his football player. They had gathered at the dormitory, Malden Hall, and Hatfield, accompanied by athletic director Bobby Robinson and several members of the Clemson University staff, had a chance to visit with the football team. Make no mistake, the team has made their position very clear. They wanted Danny Ford or one of his assistants, but after the meeting, they had this to say. I recommended to each player that they take their time and not make a hasty decision as to what their uh, future will be, whether here at Clemson or somewhere else, and to uh, bring a lot of factors into consideration before they do decide. Now, while the team took a wait-and-see attitude, it was obvious some of the fans were not convinced. However, it was hard to tell who they were. the reception you just got. I'm glad they care enough to come out. That's the main thing. At least they got an opinion, don't they? If you got nobody with any opinion, you don't have anything. The reception inside was a great deal more cordial as athletic director Bobby Robinson introduced Hatfield to the gathering, made up mostly of Clemson staff members and IPTA members. 
and the new coach had a chance to impart some of his philosophy. The philosophy to have the tenant is just uh, the team comes first, and any rule we have relates to if, uh, if any of your actions will build us closer together as a team, do it, and if it won't, don't. And that's the basic parameter, because I think those are the main lessons I'd like for them to learn. And if they do that, and we recruit the right type person with the right type of ability and, let him, and develop him to be his best, then we will have championship football teams continue to have uh, as you, we already have here at Clemson. And the new coach is well aware that a great big portion of his job will be to try and heal some of the wounds that have been created in the last week. Yeah, you look at most healing at uh, time usually uh, heals all the wounds. You, if you want to be well right after an operation, you're not. It takes time and, and there's no way to speed up the healing process. Uh, it, it's an individual thing and, and everybody's different because of your relationship with people. I think that's just natural. But uh, uh, healing does come. As soon as the press conference was completed, Hatfield ventured out to meet some of the Clemson fans who had gathered, trying to start that healing process. Now, it's important to note that amongst the fans who were on hand, not the boos were not for Hatfield, at least it didn't appear that way. They were more for Clemson University administrators, and most of the protest had been directed at him, not at the new coach. Stephen Stock, who has been covering the story with me all this week, spent some time with Clemson's official community and has their view of their big decision. It was hard to tell if the boos from the crowd at Memorial Stadium were for Coach Hatfield or for Clemson Athletic Director Bobby Robinson. One thing was for certain, the security surrounding the news conference was beefed up because of potential fan anger. Sled agents were on hand. A sled source who asked not to be identified says that agents were protecting Robinson after he had received several death threats. What about the fact that there's been some death threats? Does that bother you at all? Clemson people are the best in the world. Without question. Don't you think you're making that fella feel like hell? While Robinson wouldn't say anything about the threats, former football coach Frank Howard would. Frankly, I like Ford, and I like uh, the president, I like uh, Bobby Robinson, but uh, better than all of them, I like Clemson. And I don't think no individual is bigger than Clemson. And I hope we do good, and I hope that new coach does well. Max Lennon also drew the crowd's wrath as he emerged from the news conference. Well, it's unfortunate that, again, some people uh, allow themselves to become so emotionally involved that uh, that sort of thing exists. Bobby is class, and he's straight up, and he runs a very good department, and uh, I've gained a great deal of confidence in him. I can't speak for other people's emotions. Does but, it bother uh, you? Yeah. It bothers me when I see emotions reach this level. There's no question about it because uh, we know the mission of this institution. Football's a big part of it, and we're not de-emphasizing football, but uh, we're looking ahead to a total package. The interesting thing about all of this is it is all over a football coach. One law enforcement source who asked not to be identified told me someone has their priorities mixed up. Stephen Stock, News 4, Clemson. Now, of course, we've told you a little bit about Ken Hatfield's day, how the selection process was completed, but you may not know much about Ken Hatfield. He's been a successful football coach. He's had teams in the Cotton Bowl. They've been in the top ten. Yeah. And when we come back, we're going to, uh, Paul Johnson will be here then, and we'll have a little story about some of his coaching philosophy and the way he does business and what Clemson fans can expect to see if they go back to the ballpark next year. Okay, good. Thank you, Stan. Stan, thanks. Well, today's announcement at Clemson sparked quite a reaction from students there and supporters of Danny Ford. As Marv Starks tells us tonight, some people believe the changes in Clemson's football program were planned a long time ago. The announcement of the new Clemson coach turned a somber Sunday for many students and supporters into a day of outrage. I don't think I'm going to outlive this. I, I will never get over the humiliation that they have done to Danny Ford. Never will I outlive this. I know I In a last-ditch effort to express sentiment for ex-coach Danny Ford, about 100 supporters rallied, even booed. New coach Ken Hatfield as he arrived to make his formal announcement at Tiger Stadium. Similar feelings were expressed all day by students on campus who couldn't understand why the new coaching change came so quickly. If the players wanted to talk to him, said, I mean, they came right out and said they're not playing enough. Danny Ford comes back, or an assistant gets raised, 
And that was just Friday night, and here is Sunday, and they're having someone new up already. You know, this university is supposed to be for the students, and, and the athletic department is supposed to be for the players, that I think that they should take their input as well as, you know, the students' input. Sources say Coach Hatfield's scheduled meeting with the team players was to ease tension. Tension that had the players threatening to boycott just last night. Those same players had little or nothing to say any time before the official announcement. Other students say the change is a welcome one. I think it's needed. It's Clemson's a big football you know, school, so I think it was needed that they do it quickly. Well, we'll miss Danny, but I mean, everything comes to an end. And good luck to Coach Hadfield. Marv Starks, News 4, Clemson. I'm sure a lot of people are wondering about the background of this new coach yeah. at Clemson. Paul has it. We certainly do. And uh, if you're a football fan, you probably know Ken Hatfield. If you're not a football fan, then you're probably going, who is this guy? And we'll try <laughs> to clear that up right now. Because many football fans in the area, the name Ken Hatfield really, really isn't that well known. But as Stano Linick reports, Ken Hatfield has been a winner for all his life. Ken Hatfield has a career coaching record of 82 wins, 48 losses, and two ties. And he has had teams ranked in the top 20. One of those teams coming while being the head coach of the Air Force Academy. Now, during the last six years as head coach at Arkansas, he's won two straight Southwestern Conference titles and had his teams play in postseason play all six years he was in Fayetteville. His coaching style might be very familiar to Clemson fans since the Razorbacks' offensive coordinator this past year, Jack Crow, was at Clemson before. Last year at Arkansas, we uh, broke the total offensive record for the history of the school last year. And we ran basically out of an eye and a multiple set. You know, with Jack as the offensive coordinator, most of the ideas came uh, that they had formulated here at Clemson. So a lot of it would be, there won't be much change very much offensively. Now for Hatfield, today was the first day to see the facilities at Clemson and to try and get to understand some of the traditions, like running down the hill to start games. The rich tradition and loyalty of, of all you people at Clemson is widely known, probably more so than, than you can ever imagine everywhere that, that I've ever been. Sandy and I feel it's a rare privilege to be part of this loyalty and tradition that you do have. The new coach is spending the rest of the day talking with present assistants on the Clemson staff and getting a feel for how he will begin putting together his team at Clemson. He's hoping to get things moving forward quick enough to salvage a recruiting weekend this coming weekend.